Good evening. I'll call this meeting of the Parks and Rec Commission to order. I think before we start our business, I'd like, since we talk, uh, a lot of things we talk about are dealing with youth, I think we should congratulate uh, Liberty Volleyball team yeah. on becoming the 5A state champions and the Clear Creek, Clear Creek Amana girls who were the 4A runner-up today. Mm -hmm. So I think congratulations to them. And well, we keep wishing our best to the Liberty football, high school football team. It's continuing in the playoffs tomorrow night. So it's great to see all the community support and people celebrating and, and kids being successful. So, so then I'll ask for uh, any a motion to approve the minutes. Um, I move to approve the minutes. A second. Any discussion, corrections? Any objection to unanimous consent? Minutes will be approved as read. Okay, Guy, we're ready to... Yeah. Move on to you. Good evening, everyone. Your, your photographs and report. <laughs> I noticed the photographs came first before the report, right? <laughs> <laughs> I scroll all the way to the bottom first, look at your pictures. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, um, we've been pretty busy this past month. Um, of course, we've had we've had pretty good weather, so we just keep working away. Um, the community center parking lot lights. We finally got those figured out, and they're all working now. Um, a lot of work continues on the Babe Ruth field. Um, we, uh, the backstop is in. Um, the, the turf is looking really good. We put new surface on the field. Um, the shed is the new siding. Um, city staff, mostly Tim and, and a couple guys, uh, they put the brick on the bottom and siding on the top so the building really come together. We've moved over to the press box now, and we, we have the brick on the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> New concrete was poured in the dugout, so there's a lot of lot of improvements at Babe Ruth Field. So hopefully next season, um, it's going to look like a whole new new facility. So, um, let's see here. Our sports field teams, um, maintenance teams, they continue to provide field maintenance. Um, but however, we are finished with with the um, baseball softball season um now um soccer continues and is that just one more weekend brian no just saturday just Today, saturday tonight and then saturday we're done yeah, okay good deal um as soon as we well the weather's been holding so we haven't winterized that because i should stand up there yet so uh that's something we'll we'll for sure be doing next week is getting that facility winterized um we have had to do some mowing and trimming this kind of spot uh mowing um and some trimming, but uh, that's pretty much come to a halt, the drier weather. Uh, however, we have been keeping keeping up on a lot of uh, watering of all of our landscaping, especially all our new stuff. Uh, with the dry weather, just it's just been taking a lot of um, frequent watering. We continue to prune trees. Um, right now is a good time to prune trees. It, uh, everything's going down for the winter so and gone dormant, so if you have trees to prune, now is a good time to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, been cutting down a lot of our ash trees, unfortunately, just because of the animal ash borer. Um, and we've been trying the treat, but um, they're pretty persistent. So, does cutting down the trees um, help prevent more infect? I guess they're not infections, that, like the it's the movement. Insect. No, no. So it's, it's just, just it's just it's just inevitable. What's going to happen? <laughs> um, it's like it's a front, like a like a storm. It's just they devour all the ash trees and they just keep moving forward. So do they, are they moving like west or? Yeah, they're going the... west, like from the east to the west. Where did they, so did they start on the east coast? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They think they came in on, on pallet wood from what, Asia? Asia. Asia. That's how right. they got here mm -hmm. years and years ago. And it's just. Do they have out. any sense of, I mean, not pertinent for a city necessarily, but what, what kind of timeline does that take like to go through a state or when they might've started? Uh, it's been we've been talking about it for 15 years now it yeah. started you know so they knew it was coming for yeah. oh that yeah we've long, been talking about it for years and oh. it finally it really started to notice it now yeah. yeah well i think they were surprised when it crossed the mississippi right yeah yeah, like yeah but firewood is a pretty bad culprit people taking firewood out of yeah. from states that are uh, quarantined mm -hmm. and they shouldn't so mm -hmm. it, they live under the bark um you take firewood and then they hatch and so it just kind of so it just needed people to cross Mississippi. It jumps. It jumps quickly. Otherwise, it wouldn't spread as fast, but it would spread. Wow. Okay. Thanks for the education. Yeah. So you're going to 
a lot of trees that you see in town now are ash trees, and we are seeing a lot of dead ash trees. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, yeah. the did they just appeared nope. on uh, did you? Cole's, <clears throat> Cole's Bakery? Yeah, they took all those out yeah. last week. They were done. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, we're we we we're more of a younger community. Um, our old part of town has some pretty mature ash, but um, we're a younger community where the ash trees that we do have aren't you know, ginormous. You know, not huge. Not the it's really horrible ones. To let down. Go yeah. Of. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Do they jump from tree to tree, or is strictly fly. strictly ash though? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. like, if you had an ash and then maple, will they eventually take no, out they, the maple too, or no. is it's just ash tree. Yeah, just Good enough. Ash. <laughs> yeah. Delicious just ash tree. Not treat. You can mm -hmm. treat. Uh, there's many different methods. Uh, you know, we switch treatments. We were using a midicoprid. Now we're using safari. Um, and we're, we're going to bump. We, we have bumped up to the maximum amount you can give in a year's time. So if, Has that helped? Well, it has on some. Um <laughs> The green ash, they're they're really affecting the green ash, the white ash, not as bad right now. Mm -hmm. So I like in my front yard, I have a green ash and a white ash, and they're in the green ash, and, and I've been treating, and my white ash looks perfect, nothing in them yet. So I don't know. It's I hope they <clears throat> hope to save a few, but it's, yeah. it's probably not a good possibility of that. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Also, along the tree line, we did finish our annual tree wrapping of our younger uh, maple trees. So um, maple trees are very susceptible to sun scald um, on the south side. Um, so what happens is in the wintertime, you get that nice warm day on the south side of a tree. It will pop the bark because the bark is frozen. It gets, it gets it's cold and it gets hot and it'll pop the bark. So maples are very susceptible to that. So if you wrap them with a tree wrap, you can prevent that from happening. So we've been doing that for quite a few years now. It's just, uh, and it, it's just one of those things you have to do. Um, the splash pad has been closed and winterized for the season. Um, the Liberty Center irrigation and fountain have been winterized for the season. However, the waterfall is still going. We'll let that go until we have freezing weather. And it's, um, you know, it makes more sense to do it at that time. We just leave it go because it's kind of enjoyable. Um, when we start getting freezing weather, you'll see a big cloud of steam coming <laughs> off of where the waterfall is going, so it's kind of cool. Um, park staff attended the Aquatics Forest and Roadside Pest Management Recertification class. Um, we have to take that because we have, we're Iowa certified to, to apply pesticides and herbicides, so we have to keep up with that annually. Um, the Tree City USA <clears throat> Recertification application, um, we, we finished that and submitted it, submitted it to the IDNR Forestry Department. Um, if approved, it will move on to the state level. Um, or it will be sent on to the Arbor Day Foundation, I guess, that once it's approved at the state level. Um, we've been we've received this award um, for the past 25 years, so we want to keep that tradition going. Um, it, it helps with, you know, uh, grant funding and other things that you might apply for. And it's just kind of cool. So, be known for Tree City USA. Um, park staff assisted the the DNR fish management team with the release of 2,000 rainbow trout at Liberty Center Pond again. We do that twice a year. Um, we have to wait until the water temperatures get to a certain temperature because trout love it cold. Um, this I year, caught, I think they caught them all that day. I Many yeah, Many it was crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Poor fish. <laughs> yeah. What a day anyway, for those fish, fish, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So it's just the first year that um, you get there, the DNR gets there with the fish, and there's not a place to park because the bank... Everyone's waiting for them. <laughs> it's just like, it's a fish a day. Shoulder to shoulder. We have their fish best day. life. <laughs> If we had a hunt, we had a Halloween yeah. thing over there, and there was people all over fishing. It was yeah. like, <laughs> might as well just chuck it at them. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of funny though, because the first person to catch one, so they, they put these fish in, and there's rows of people, and the, per, the first person to catch one was way, way down the line. Uh, yeah, you would think it would have been right there, but no, it wasn't. So. 
He got a little bit of swim in before he got caught. So. <laughs> Good to have that interest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody yell? Let him go. Let him go. <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> a lot of people do uh, catch and release. But um, with trout, if um, the, the temperatures get above like 70, 72 or something like that. So um, in springtime, when we put trout in there, once the water temperature gets too warm for them, they, they die anyway. So you want them caught. Yeah, you want them caught. Uh, we poured two concrete footings at Redfern Dog Park and installed um, the information kiosks. So uh, instead of hanging all the signs on the fences and the gates, we're, we had these um, kind of mesh looking kiosks that we're going to actually attach all the information to them. So it should look a lot nicer. <clears throat> How did the free weekend go for the dogs? I mean, it went it went well. Did it kind of get people interested, and so some will sign up and register? Did we see any increase in registrations after uh, that? I think not so much right now because they don't have the pro, pro rate yeah. in place. Next year, they'll have a pro rate. So I don't think somebody would want to buy a dog pass right now knowing that it's going to be, it's going to expire here soon. So that's my wife went there and the, yeah, she noticed that there's not a pro rate. So we were yeah, like, there will why, be though. Why pay $50 for, yeah. you know, right. a month or yeah. whatever it is. We just yeah. don't have that capability in the system right now, but next year they would, they're supposed that to. That would be so. good. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Continue to uh, attend progress meetings um, regarding the Dubuque Street project, which has come along pretty well. I would say through by the end of November, it should be wrapping it up there. So um, I don't know if you've been up that way. I know it's kind of hard to get through that area, but it's really going to be nice. Um, a lot of nice landscaping, a lot of nice concrete area. Um, the road's really nice having it, you know, tee right into Dubuque Street now. So Is the road right by the bike shop? Is that a dead end now or what? Yeah, it's a dead end. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's something you're going to have to mark, I think, pretty well because yeah. it's easily... You yeah. continue straight on. It goes a little bit, and then it's like, yeah, oh, it yeah. doesn't go anywhere. So you're adding more landscaping to take care of. Yes, <laughs> we are. Yeah, yeah, we're adding more landscaping. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we've been working on the FY uh, twenty three twenty four budget. Um, I, I am going to ask for another full time person to help out with all that landscaping. So um, the five year CIP, I just finished that too. Um, we just kind of plan out five years so we can kind of see where our expenses are going to land. Um, however, priorities do change a little bit, so we tweak them every year. Um, so anyway, Tim, do you have anything you want to add? Or? No, I don't think so. That's all I have. So if you have any questions. I know we had the Fox Run people here last month with the projections about when you're going to be doing things yeah. there. So I did bump that up into this next FY24, this next July budget um, Fox Run. I don't know where it's going to go, So, but I have the Fox Run uh, Park, new playground, new trail, and Fox Run Neighborhood, new trail, and new playground. So um, we'll see where that goes during budget discussions. I don't know if I'll get all that to go through, but that's my next my next priority to do. So. Hopefully we can get something to go. So does someone come along and kind of go through their playground equipment preferences and sort of check numbers or, you know, kind of consider other vendors or things like that? Or do you sort of take what they say they want and then see if that factors into the budget? Oh, you, you mean? Uh, like their presentation because they were so specific, yes, which yes. is great. But then I also wonder, like, you know, how does the city respond to that? Do they take it as is or do they so modify I had communication with them prior to the meeting, and okay. I gave them, I guess, some magazines or some the website. Oh, yeah, you did mention Where that. we yeah. get most of our equipment, so at least they were. So they sourced it from the yeah right yeah. Spots. Okay. No, I'm very open to um, different kinds of equipment. Um, we try to do stuff that's unique, yeah, um, like the rock climbing area. We, that's the, great. The zip, the zip line. We try to do some things that are a little different, or like Pin Meadows Park. We've like that's one of the tallest playgrounds in in Iowa, so it's like a three story playground. Mm -hmm. So we try to mix it up a bit. Um, what we'll normally do is if, when it does come time for playground, what I we, our current pra um, practices, I'll have like three different layouts of different kinds of equipment. 
I'll bring it here to the parks board and let you look through it and maybe um, kind of, you know, throw things back and forth, <clears throat> discuss it, um, maybe have some residents here that will throw an opinion and we'll choose something like option one, two or three. Cool. So. Um, I did. I did drive over there just to look at the equipment, and it is a little tired. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, it's, it's, it's twenty years old. Original. I mean, I kind of felt guilty that we go to Penn Meadows, and I'm like, oh, you yeah, know. No, so I, I it's like, yeah, it's twenty I, years it's old. I, I put that in when I was very new here, so yeah. it's. Uh, and it, I thought it was really great that they wanted to have a very inclusive, you know. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. What's the usual lifespan for playground equipment? Twenty years. Really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what they. I mean, that's what the they'll advertise a twenty year lifespan them, but uh, they can last longer. But they show the wear. Okay, over it's time. a little rough. Yeah, yeah, it's a little rough. And it's older stuff, you know. It's stuff yeah, that from it's, twenty yeah, some years is, ago, yeah. so you it know, looks like style in the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Playground <laughs> twenty years ago, yeah. we're not nearly as exciting, you know. Yeah. As nice they are now. Probably so. was a lot cheaper too back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you guys ripped down that wood um, playground that reminded me of my youth. I like, yeah, oh, yeah. No. I know. We were oh, actually so vintage. I know. Yeah, yeah. It was vintage. <laughs> Splinters. I yeah. Yeah. Like, think about all the all the things. Exclusive <laughs> parts. Yeah. Oh, good. Any other questions for Guy? Centennial Park. They're still working toward the grant on that, um, and and design of that so if that all works out it's going to be a really cool park um, when it's all finished so we've got any timeline on hearing for the, the grant is a destination I, Iowa. yeah destination the Iowa. Next, uh, go around or <laughs> i would think we'd know something within six months on that i'm just saying that i don't know for sure but um they let it let um cities know fairly pretty quickly that would be great are there any plans to do any work at centennial before we know about the grant? I, I don't think so. I think we're kind of at a spot now because everything that uh, is left, um, they're trying to use in this. Um, they're try, they're try, I should say they're trying their, their fundraising. Mm -hmm. And so like for instance, the splash pad, they're wanting to get donations to maybe <coughs> naming rights of the splash pad or they want naming rights of the, the amphitheater, you know, mm -hmm. so Okay. Um, yeah, we're kind of at that point, or like the um, ADA playground that we're planning on putting next to the, mm -hmm. the existing um, traditional mm -hmm. playground equipment that we have right now. Um, I think they're wanting to use that to pull in funding sources. Okay. So. I was just thinking, which makes sense totally. I, I was thinking yeah. about, you know, if, <clears throat> you know, are there small improvements that could be completed, mm -hmm. you know, like, bike racks or you know that's just, you know that's true that's stuff could, like that we could look sure. at too yeah absolutely that's, you know? that could be done yeah yep. okay what if we don't get the grant what's is there a <clears throat> secondary plan or what is the i i don't think there is, i don't think so okay. but if we do get the grant we're on a track of having to do a lot of things to fulfill that grant okay. so do we have a sense i was just looking at the website and granted i haven't looked at it extensively but do you know what the competitors are and what their proposals are is that open you know to be honest with you, i'm sure there that's out there i've i have not been too much into the that side of it yeah um that's as fine. far as the grant writing and that so okay and i don't know if they normally tell you that kind of stuff i think it just kind of everybody turns it in and then oh here you get this yeah, money i didn't and, know if they had like you could see what yeah i don't i don't think so i mean afterwards you'll after, see all the projects yeah don you will yeah their word of mouth like of knowing, knowing falls yeah. knowing people mm -hmm. i guess the one thing i've been asking yeah. was there will be picnic cutthroat cutthroat out there yeah have a, have a picnic i've been getting a park a few pictures from a lady out there that um some guy sitting in the grass or whatever and like this would sure be nice having a bench right here <laughs> uh, point taken i only sent it to you three times yeah. <laughs> do you send any pictures back like a blanket or anything to no. say <laughs> no but uh, we will get some coleman makes a really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we are taking donations <laughs> Thanks, guy. We won't be too hard on you. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay, we'll move along to Shelly. Uh, well, October is a busy month for special events when it comes to the rec center. Uh, we had the Moonlight Walk around Liberty Center. 
Uh, it was originally scheduled for the 14th of October, but due to uh, cold and wind, and we didn't want the decorations to be torn apart, we uh, postponed it to the 21st. And on the 21st, we had beautiful weather, uh, estimated probably about 1,500 individuals, wow. maybe even over 2,000. I'm not good at estimating numbers, so other people were saying 1,000, some were saying 2,000, so I just said, oh, let's go with 1,500 uh, people. So very good attendance uh, for that event. Uh, Pumpkin Creations, Matt Fielder did that event and had 30 participants. Uh, Ashley did the floating pumpkin patch in the indoor pool. Um, and that was 134 participants for that. And then we did our haunted happenings, somewhat new twist. Uh, we did the library's trail treat instead of the trunk or treat uh, outside along the trail. And then they came in uh, the east side of the building and then kind of exited out the main entrance this year, a little bit different. We didn't have any games or anything, but just had uh, Halloween scenes and stuff for them to go through and then got a bag of candy at the end. Um, again, beautiful weather, all, both those nights. Um, so I don't know if that also was, uh, I was homecoming on Friday night. I think there was football, high school football going on as well. So, uh, we asked it between the two nights and one during the day for the non-schoolers. We had about 575, uh, in attendance for that event. Uh, so definitely busy. Uh, if you're looking for pictures, Please go on the city website, or if you're Facebook on uh, Friends with uh, North Liberty uh, Communications does a good job of putting that those photos on mm -hmm. the website. So I didn't want to include all the different photos uh, <laughs> in the report. So go go to the website, please. <laughs> we can't do the photos quite like Guy no, does. So step the we don't want to step yeah. on any toes. Yeah. We're oh, don't you not step on my toe? For all the pictures you want in. I just wish we could display them. <laughs> they're on the website. That's what's good. Yeah. So that was what uh, the majority of October is. Definitely Halloween events and our big community events going on. So. Um, and another news during the month of October, uh, Dale Leonard, our head custodial maintenance supervisor, uh, has let us know that he will retire at the end of the year. So um, we did advertise for that position, got 13 applicants, mm -hmm. and probably starting next week I'll call and set up interviews. Uh, looking at maybe five or six probably to interview. And then uh, choose our candidate. We do have a one in-house individual that applied and then see what rolls from there how many years has Dale been there how many years has he been he's there? been here 23 oh, 20, he, wow. yep. cool. same kind of time frame as i he was one of my first hires cool. so, yep. uh rest, like yesterday shelly does it though <laughs> some days it does some days not so much <laughs> <laughs> you know that as well. <laughs> uh, just normal re uh, reporting through the rest of the report. Um, I don't know if anybody has any specific questions on any of the information. How do you choose um, the new classes that you offer, the new fitness classes? Do you just have people offer to be instructors and you see if they fit on the schedule or how does that get decided key number one is anybody that wants to do a program and if we have the space and it doesn't conflict with another program we'll try it and then revamp it if it does go great um if it doesn't go then do we change date time or does it just need more word of mouth mm -hmm. if they don't have a following already mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of it is just people coming in saying hey i'd like to teach this class Oh, cool. Um, and doing that. Uh, Staff-wise, we have those that are operated by staff. They do majority of those, and if they're pretty popular, then it's hard to add in more. But uh, I know, like, with Kyle with Pee Wee Sports, uh, he's been pretty much maxed out on numbers on his classes. So we're trying to figure out how is there another day or how we can add more uh, just because... 
his classes are so popular. So it's just kind of a combination of both and what people are wanting and if we have the space and time to add more. Uh, let's see. I didn't really have any other big exciting than just regular normal numbers and stuff that you can see within the report. Um, I'm open to any questions. So I had somebody reach out to me and ask me how you volunteer for Beat the Bitter. Uh, that is a City Slate event. Um, and I know they have a volunteer website. If you go to beatthebitter.com, I believe. Okay. Might be. So through the city, they yeah, just go Yeah, they could the contact city. the communications department. Oh, and, and they'll they tell them. Be to too. But yeah. is that already started with the volunteers and all that? We're always taking volunteers. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'd say contact Nick or Jillian at yeah. communications. Okay. All right. I think it's a, a compliment for all the activities I've had this fall and especially free activities yeah. for families to come and gather and just relax without spending any money. <laughs> I think it's really, I heard, you know, the big night around the pond was, I've heard a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of comments about that. The, of course, it was, was a beautiful night, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> and wow, there was a crowd down there. <laughs> well, that's what we like. And we get sponsors to help cover costs or whatever so we don't have to charge so that is another good thing with the city slate stuff so yeah i, I think that's one of the things the, the city slate that yeah, has wonderful. been you know so sort of having having all the activities and now there's new current activities and you know that, that's just really i think it's helping build community yeah you know, people are getting out among each each other yeah because some of those some of those we get extra money so we use some city funds and we use some of the extra to make it bigger or better than or better. than it was the year before or whatever so mm. that's kind of like the haunted happenings you know <clears throat> in the past we had charged like a nominal one to two dollars per person to come in uh, to mm. offset a lot of our game costs and prize costs of doing the uh, games and stuff and so um, being a slate event we then made it free mm. but then again to accommodate the numbers and get people in and out we kind of revamped it a little bit so um it's basically this city slate events is a good combination of rec communications and library all kind of coming together and putting those events on so it's been good a lot of good things i hope everybody out there is, is on the website to keep up with the city mm -hmm. slate what's going on with the city government because a lot of good things it is beatthebitter.com. I just confirmed. Yeah. So good, good memory on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, remind me, this last uh, go at Beat the Bitter, did we not do an ice rink? Do you remember? We did, we did an ice rink. We did. An ice rink. We we did. did. Okay. Was it two years ago? That we, I know one. Yeah, yeah. two yeah. years ago. We two did not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, um, yeah, would love to. Uh, got the new liner in for that the other day. So. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Well. Um, would would definitely like to know if there's interest in curling again, mm. uh, since I'm I'm part of the Cedar Rapids curling mm -hmm. club as well. So we're hoping yeah. the weather stays like this, so we won't have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a lot of people that probably wouldn't complain too much. So. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are they called? Do they float? Those cones? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can talk to Matt. Cool. Stones. They're they're 44 pounds. Oh, you can, granite stones. You can talk to Matt. Matt. Huh? Those things are yeah, they, they they come from one specific island, yeah, and that's all of them are mined from that one. There's a quarry. YouTube video on that. I just okay. watched it the other day. Yeah, it's yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. I think that's what I saw too. Yeah, it's like it's really wow, cool. those things are very expensive. They're very expensive. So our club is fortunate to own a, a couple sets, not new though. Ours are all used because they, yeah. they're very very expensive new to yeah, buy. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So well, maybe we should all learn. It's yeah. we'd love well, yeah we'd love to have you we do learn to curls and up at the ice arena so but you know that's great to do it outside and beat the bitters I know we've done it in the past and mm -hmm. so yeah I understand it is a little bit tricky though the ice has it to is. be in a pretty even in our arena it's challenging mission. yeah so you put it outside mm -hmm. it's you know a hundred x more challenging um, yeah. so uh, you know the the very professional tippy top there it is perfect glass yeah um so you know yeah it's you're gonna have little bumps and rocks and whatever and that's you know <laughs> it's still fun so yeah. 
Is it tiring doing the old? Uh... That I mean, that's where the cardio comes <laughs> in, right? The sweep, you got to get the on sweeping, it. Yeah. Um, sweeps. Are sweepers that expensive? Yes. Do they come from? Recording? Uh, no, I, uh, they, I there are specific brooms with this, uh, specific material that have different uh, coarse to them Mm -hmm. um you know i went with the patriotic usa themed uh broom myself but there's lots of different uh (laughs) lots of different ones so yeah would love to have you come out and check it out it's cool matt messick at the rec center is always seriously though do you have trying to do that yeah learn to curls we call them yeah learn to curls Mm -hmm. and come out on the ice we do it's one night um and then uh if you want there's sort of a a a next level that you can sign up sign up for four or five weeks and kind of go a little deeper where's that at The I'm on ice. Green. Oh, yep. Okay. Nice. Yeah. That's where our club's at. So. Partnership going there with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. With North Bonding Liberty. activity. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, my question, uh, you have uh, for the no school days for Iowa City. Mm-hmm. Where do we offer do we offer anything for Clear Creek Amana when any extra when there's no school days <clears throat> for their calendar? We, we do follow the Iowa City School District mm-hmm. calendar. Um, a lot of that comes with the staff that we have uh, that are our counselors. And so where we've had them in the past has always been associated with the Iowa City uh, yes. Community School District. So it it, it is hard <laughs> because also with early out days right. are different. That and so how in, do we accommodate? Been brought up in my neighborhood, and I just got this tonight before because I'd asked some time ago. I asked a couple of years ago how many students of Clear Creek Amana have a North Liberty address. And it's it's overwhelming. One thousand and thirty four students at Clear Creek Amanda School District mm-hmm. have a North Liberty address, mm-hmm. and that's thirty four percent of their enrollment. They sent me, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we do. But that that's a question. Sometimes you know that uh, why don't do have more things for for the kids that are on the Clear Creek schedule? And I know they're because they're. If people don't know, Clear Creek gets out at Wednesday, early dismissal on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Iowa City's on Thursdays, yep. and there are no school days. Can you? Exp- I, I mean, no can someone explain that to me? I know that's not <laughs> parks, but as someone who has a kid that's coming up, that's really nerve wracking. Like how that like time's why, going to like why, they do why, it? why is it? Uh, from what I understand, it has to do with the uh, meetings that teachers do instead of. So they have fewer full days off by spreading out just an hour off early every week. Because those teachers have to do like in-service Yeah, yeah it's just like for parents school, that's yeah. really... Yeah. It's, it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I was under so that's many hours now instead of so many days. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. The school year is based upon hours rather than days. And it always, most always have had to do that to mm-hmm. fulfill... Yeah. And it's not just here, it's all over. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah. yeah. So that's a common thing now? Yeah. Yeah, little towns, big towns. Mm-hmm. I spent 40 years in public education, and it went on for all of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Kids love it's it. Like that's, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Kids love it. <laughs> we had late starts for many years yeah. where we didn't start mm-hmm. school till later and had our meetings of a morning, but changed yeah. because the community wanted it otherwise. Because today's was Iowa City's, and they all went to the volleyball game, and then they went back to school for yeah. an hour and a half and went home. <laughs> so they all thought today was great, so... That's five hours. But, mm. but yeah, that is, you know, that number, keep, I thought that a few years ago I asked it was four or 500, but it is, you know, it's a, a thousand. And of course, well, it's only going to be getting I, more. I don't know if I'm the only one that lives in a Clear Creek neighborhood. I, or not. I am. I am as well. <laughs> if you think about the, the, the growth of those neighborhoods, yeah. it's, it's, and it's yeah. going to, and it's continuing to grow. If you look at near right. Centennial, that's all Clear Creek over there. And because yeah. mm-hmm. I think we ask, you don't bus from North Bend for. Correct. After school or right. whatever, what's that? that we we, bar- we barely have enough to get all the schools in Iowa City, let alone the Clear Creek side and staff. Well, and we don't do all the Iowa City ones either. Yeah. We don't go to Grant. We don't. I mean, mm-hmm. again, yeah. It's, yeah, we do go to Grant. We go to Grant. We go to don't Grant. We go? There's one that we don't go into anymore. Van Allen. But if somebody transports their own child here, they can come to the mm-hmm. after school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But yep. I don't know how, I mean, if you're transporting them there, you're probably home. So, <laughs> yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or no, it's a, I mean, from home and need your child. Y- yeah. Else, yeah. <laughs> Not while you're home, working, yeah. <laughs> take a break system. to transport. Mm-hmm. So, you know. And it was tough on uh, that place too, when now elementary gets out before yeah. high school and yeah. our staff is getting younger, but 
they can't get there no. before the younger ones get there. So mm-hmm. it's and only certain constant, people only certain people battle. can drive, and they can only it has to be a certain license, and not all of them can get it. And so sometimes so think, that's a struggle. Uh, staffing, but I think the Clear Creek families would appreciate it if we, <laughs> you know, some things were offered a little, mm-hmm. little for for them when they see one's offered for one and not offered for the other. That's I hear, you know. I mean, Corval's in the same boat. I mean, they don't. They do Iowa City also. Um, is all Corval Iowa City schools? No, I don't think so. Mm, no, so. part, like of in part of Corval is in Kirk 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 That's just. Oh, that's. There. I mean, that's a strange thing in this area. Is there's two different school districts. Yeah, but they're kind in, of in, the, in the same town. I mean, it cuts off in the middle of town, which. Well, they have little is flags. Very, is very there's like little flags of. of it's people very. That it's are very in odd. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, you have to remember a lot of North Liberty was rural yeah. land yeah. and mm-hmm. was in the Clear Creek. It would have been nice. Well, if, 25 years before. ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nice if North Liberty could have just had their own school district and yeah. this wouldn't even have been a topic. Yeah. So. Now, I know that with the North Bend and then I'm not sure with the elementary schools that are over off of uh, James. Is it James the park? street? or You mean park? Um, in Tiffin? In Tiffin there. Oak Hill. I, oh, Oak Hill. I don't know who runs the schools before and after school programs. Ch- uh, Champions does. Yeah. Champions does? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, uh, again, I don't know what their numbers are yeah. as far as um, full or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then basically that's well, same with yeah. us. North Bend, take... North Bend runs a BASP also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Through Champions. Yeah. But I think the question arose from when they saw the whole day is for the two days Iowa City was off school that we're offering something, which offering something all day or something for for them. And and not that's where the question arose and then discussion about the early dismissals, you know, times for mm-hmm. coming to activities. So their concern, just to be clear, is on Wednesday when it's early out and then on the days that Clear Creek has days off in their school district. Is that... What the right. What were, what are you offering for the I was for the all day program or something for again? It usually falls like on their breaks and stuff. But like this last time, what was it? Monday and Tuesday, the first Monday and Tuesday in October. Yeah, was strange this year that they didn't have school, and so we did offer all days on those two days. I don't know if Clear Creek was in session or was not in session. Clear Creek was off a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday Friday. So, I mean, there's just a lot of variables there that play a role. And, again, staffing was probably the key why we stick with the Iowa City School District. And what about – and I don't know. This wasn't brought up, but I got – what about open gym times? Like if they're out early on Wednesday, is there open – Yeah, they come. Mm -hmm. A lot of Clear Creek kids come. Yeah, we can, yeah. A lot of Clear Creek kids come on Wednesdays. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I can clarify that. Yep. Any other questions, concerns? Point. They're going. To, you mentioned staffing. So how is staffing going? For it's going. You got pretty much full staff, or mm, always. I don't looking. know if it's ever full. I, I mean, was gonna say, full. Eh. <laughs> we get some good ones, and then they leave, and we get some others, and then we get some good ones, and then they. Leave. I mean, it's it's a revolving. <laughs> it's part, say, it's, it's part of... time work. I mean, they. Mm-hmm. You know, some want to work, some don't. So mm-hmm. you take what you can get at this point. And then once you. Are all good and they're learning everything. Know what's going on. Oh, they're going off to. We have a couple full time stuff. <laughs> anybody mentioned the roof word? The roof, roof or work? what was done? Yeah, you know, what's been everything done? Uh, everything. Not everything's done. Uh, we're waiting <laughs> on material. Actually, now that you say that, that was supposed to be by the this week. Mm-hmm. Um, they were waiting on gutters and uh, flashing. Oh, flashing. At the top I think to that's tie all, all in. I think that's, yeah, I think yeah. that's all that's left. Anyway. But we're waiting on material, I guess. And indoor pool's going fine. <laughs> indoor pool <laughs> going fine. <laughs> well, I know everybody does their best to keep everything up and going and activities going and, and do, you know, people to take advantage of, of what's what's out there. I, I think they are. I we think the numbers are pretty good. Yeah. 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 Doing a good job. Good job. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Any other questions, concerns? Mm-hmm. We're down for our next meeting to be Thursday, December 1st. Why? Believe it. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
So Crazy. Put, get that on your <laughs> on your calendars, and uh, who knows whether we, have, we may have short le- weather like this <laughs> for December. <laughs> yeah, maybe Nino or El Nino or uh, whatever's right. coming our way. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'll... we won't be curling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Girl, latte. Well, yeah. well, when Guy mentioned they winterized the splash pad, I'm sure there were people that were thinking they'd go over there today. And, <laughs> yes, yep. probably. Like 75 degrees. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Okay. It's, it's, we've had a good discussion. I hear entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, uh, motion to adjourn. And a second. And we got a second. Any questions, concerns, or objection to adjournment? Meeting oh. adjourned. <laughs>